How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop and we're going to get started back on the cement mixture project. Uh, we're going to be doing the uh, main bearings for the yoke. We're going to go over that and uh, get started on it. The cement mixer. So we're going to do the bearings, uh, the two main journal bearings on the cement mixer. Uh, if you remember in the, in, the, in the past, I talked about this before, the bearing shells are cast iron shells. They had no bearings in them. Um, they just were cast iron on cast iron. And they have some, some signs of wear. We'll sh I'll show you that uh, in the bottom of the shell. And, but they're not too bad and they're tapered a little bit. So we're gonna be boring them out and we're gonna make some uh, bearing bronze inserts uh, to shells to go in there, uh, bearing shells. And I've done a lot of research on types of bearings and the designs of bearings and all this stuff. And I, I'm, since it's really not, a, it's not high speed at all, it barely will turn one revolution. Uh, you know here and there it's not you're just tilting the drum to pour the concrete out so it's a very low speed type of bearing and we'll just be using grease and uh, but I'm gonna put some uh, felt seals in it I'll explain all that we'll go to fusion here and we'll kind of show you the design that I'm going to make and uh, then we'll look at the actual bearing shells and talk about that for a little bit and then we'll get to be machining and and all that good stuff. This is probably going to take a couple videos, I think. Uh, but I'm going to try to do this in one, but I don't think I can. Uh, at least the machining of the, sh the, the shells themselves uh, and stuff, we'll, we'll probably break it up into two parts. Anyway, uh, let's look at the uh, fusion part of it right here. And so this is, I modeled the entire shell to figure this out because these are castings and they just went ground on as far as cleaning them up. They didn't do a very good job. Uh, so, one, so one thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to clean up the bottom so it's fairly flat. Uh, and I'll be cleaning up the top half of the, the bearing shells. Let's turn off some of this stuff so you can see here. Uh, and... We'll be, we'll be cleaning up the bottom of the, this and we'll be cleaning up the top of this so we have some parallel surfaces. And we'll probably clean up at least one side, maybe both sides. We'll see how it goes. Uh, one side is fairly, it's pretty square with the base right now. So we'll, we'll try to maintain that. Uh, and we'll have to do this to two, two uh, whole bearings. So this is a lot of work. The... So this is the bottom half. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be machining this out and we'll be putting in the, there we go. Uh, uh, we'll put in a bearing shell. I'm gonna change the colors of this so you can see a little bit better. So there's the bearing shell right in there. So, I, so after we machine the, the, uh, the blocks, the bearing blocks themselves, then we'll be making some shells. Now we'll make this as a round piece and then we'll, we're going to use a slitting saw and cut it in half. What I'm going to do is put in some shims, 50,000 shims. So we have some adjustment in the bearing um, if this you know ever wears enough to adjust, but that gives us a little adjustment in, in making the bearings fit. If we have none, no shims in there at all, then we have to be really good on what we're doing. Uh, to make that fit right. So the shims will give us uh, a little uh, flexibility in making the bearing fit real just right type of thing. Uh, we'll have, like I said, two grooves here. These two grooves will be for uh, felt I'm going to put in here. And that's going to help keep the sand and dirt and uh, water and everything out of the bearings. Uh, uh, this if it does get sand in the felt, that is an issue. Uh, it'll wear on the journal a little bit, but I'd rather have that wear than the whole journal wear. Uh, and, you know, but I'll bet you this will last 100 years. 
the, the mixer probably won't will go to scrap before then, even though it's it's very old now. <laughs> uh, so we'll like I said, we'll have some shims. And what I'm going to do is put in uh, a split of set screw here and on each side to help hold these in so they won't rotate. Uh, you can make this a little, I might make this a little bit bigger so that it kind of presses in there a little bit. Uh, we'll see how that goes. It's, it's probably easier for me to just to make them fit real well and do the set screw and lock them in. I might put in locator pins. That's what these holes are. I, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or if I really have to do that. Um, I don't, I probably don't have to, but I just modeled them in here just to see how they, where I could do it and how to do it. Um, okay, then, and then we'll have, of course, the top uh, shell here, the bearing block uh, half, and it'll be the same with the, with the split pins and the top bearing in there. And those shims are in there, so that's what that's what it's going to look like, really, once it's all done. Uh, I'll be using a bearing bronze for these shells. Uh, it's a it's a, a cord tube actually, and we'll uh, so it's like a really thick pipe, right? And we'll uh, machine inside, outside, and these grooves. Now the top half will have a grease groove. Let's see if I can show you that. Bottom, bottom. So the top ha top half of the shell is going to end up with a grease groove in the top only, and of course a grease fitting will be up on the top here. A zerk, uh, a zerk fitting will be in here. There, there, there's. Uh, no need to have a grease groove really go all the way around uh, in this type of shell. Uh, we'll have all the support on the bottom, uh, and this grease will get down into the bottom, uh, and that way you won't lose your bearing pressure. Uh, so on low-speed bearings, this is kind of a recommendation and stuff, so that's what we're going to do. Anyway, now we'll... Uh, turn everything back on that's what it's gonna look like and we have some felt seals that go in there like I said there we go and that's about it so uh, the shaft will be in there like so and uh, we're good to go so let's uh let's go back over and take a take a look at the real thing and, and we'll see a little more what we're gonna do all right, here's one of the uh, bearing shells, or not shells, but uh, uh, bearing blocks, you might say. Okay, and the numbers uh, are the order of operation that I'm going to machine them. I, I've already figured this out. Uh, what's the best thing to do with this? Since it is a casting, and they really did no machining on these at all, uh, they hit them with a hand grinder to knock off the burrs. And that's about it. And the parting line, you can still see parting line and such here. And very rough, rough uh, grind uh, from uh, like a hand grinder in here. Uh, so, uh, what we're going to do, uh, well, uh, order operations is going to be uh, this side first. And then I'll do this side here. And then this side, and then last will be this one side. And we'll do the, the three sides on this one also, and I already have them numbered. And then we're going to put it together and with some uh, 50, these are 50 thousandths aluminum shim. And it will look like something like that <laughs> uh, all together. And then we'll finish off this last side so that they're all, so it's an even thickness. Uh, uh, bearing block right and it should be uh, fairly squared up you might say uh, that's so when I do bore this that will be square and we'll have the shims in there and we'll be able to bore this square with the sides and at the bottom and it should come out real nice block uh, that's that's pretty much the simplicity uh, explanation of that so we're going to bore some of this out. This is the piece of 
bearing bronze I have. So this is bronze number uh, 932, and it's a cord piece uh, here, as you can tell. And it's three and a quarter in OD, and I don't remember the OD. Two, inside is two and a half. Uh, this is a one foot long. So we'll we'll chop off a end up chopping off a chunk of this. So we're going to turn the OD, the ID, you know, and cut it, and of course machine it to length, and then we're going to slice it uh, into two halves. That will fit, hopefully fit in here. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's the plan. And then after we do get them fitted, then we'll drill our set screw holes to hold the bearing halves in place. And uh, the the grease screw in the top half, I'm probably going to do, to do that afterwards, where we'll just take this half, the, the top half, and put it in the mill and just mill that one groove in there. That's the plan, and uh, we have some little quarter 20 set screws that are going to hold them in place. And we have some felt here that will go into the felt grooves. So that's about it. Uh, this is pretty cut and dry in a sense, uh, but these are the only two I have. I can't screw it up. I don't want to screw it up. Let me put it that way. So otherwise, I'll be contacting Clark Esterling at Windy. Uh, Hills uh, Foundry, uh, and we'll have to have some new ones made. <laughs> but let's uh, keep our fingers crossed. So we're going to be using this one side. Now there's a center punch mark in here, and the other one is the center punch mark. That's going to be my reference side for now uh, against the jaws. We'll put a piece of aluminum welding wire in here to keep that side flat against the jaw. Uh, as a reference and whatever it is down here is what it is it's not too bad as far as the heights go so we're just going to keep it that way snug it up and make sure it's down good and solid now I'll be using this welding wire a lot to take that irregularity out and get good tight grips Now I just wanted to get enough off so I had good bearing, a uh, little holiday there, but I only want to take off the bare minimum off of this. And I don't really have to get real close here. That's not a big deal. Fireball setup blocks. These things are great asset in the shop.
All right, we're ready to bolt these together and bore the inside. Now, I thought I'd show you real close. This is the bottom of the shell, or the block, I should say the block. And you can see how smooth this is here. This is where the journal was, was writing, you know, in here all the years. And you can see how rough this is. This is just rough casting. And there's some grain marks, a little bit, on this side also. Some grind marks here, you know, and, you know, and all they did was clean up the parting line. Uh, now this is the top, and it's all just rough casting. It barely even touched with the grinder at all. You can see that. So we're going to go over, and we're going to bolt these back to get. We're going to bolt these back together, uh, like so. See, I center punched this. This. This block has one punch, and the other block has two, so I know which halves go with what and how they made up. So these are ready to go, and we're going to put our shims in there, and then we're going to mount it in the milling vise, and we're going to bore that out.
All right, we got some uh, setup blocks we're going to put here. Those are going to go right between here. We got one in the front that's going to register there. And these are going to hold it up off the bed. That's the plan. Now those ones in the back hold it this way enough that the bolt heads don't touch the jaw. Now I'm making sure there's clearance on these blocks, these lower blocks, so that the boring bar won't hit them as we cut this away, of course. Now that's one nice thing about these uh, fireball blocks, they're magnetic, and so when you stick them in the spot, they stay there. It allows you, you don't have to fiddle around with three hands. This thing is not round. Uh, so I'm just going to center it up the best I can, and then when I cut it, I'll go around because you know, when I start to cut it, I'll see how much deviation I have from one side to the other and do some minor adjustments uh, so that I get this more centered up in the bore and we're cut away pretty evenly. Um, you know, you'll see a holiday maybe on this side. So you just shift it a few thousandths one way and then the next cut and see how that goes and uh, until you get it more evened up. But we're just going to get it really, we'll try to get it really close and uh, to start with. Now I'm, I'm not even touching anything with this. I'm just kind of going to eyeball it here before I even try to use an indicator. I'm just eyeballing this a little bit and uh, back it off. All right, we're going to uh, start here, I think. Back this off a little bit more because we're hitting. We'll start off with a really light cut. Now, I'm using a Bochum boring bar on this. Now, this one is, uh, this one actually has a carbide, uh, raised carbide in here. Uh, so it cuts, it's going to cut this real well. This is really hard, this surface, uh, from being used and, and kind of work hardened a little bit and all that for over the years. So this, and it has the fresh casting surface. So we're using the, we're going to go with the carbide on this. And I'm going to be using the feed on this also. First one we'll do by, first one we'll, we'll, we'll just do by hand. So we can see where we're going to touch and not touch. So we pick it up a little bit, just right in that quadrant. So I'm hitting right there. So I'm pretty centered. Uh, it's the only spot I'm touching is right there. So I could shift that way a little bit at an angle. We just go. Now it doesn't take much to do this. Just a few thousands in either direction. A couple, just a couple thousands. Like I did three and four thousand. And. 
and I didn't touch anywhere, so that's uh, pretty centered. Come out 20,000, so we'll just see what we're going to do. Now, I expect the top to cut more than the bottom because it's worn on the bottom. And it is, it's cutting here in the top. And I'm cutting on that quadrant. So I cut a little bit right in here and over here. I could probably go that way a little bit. Alright, we have pretty good contact in four quadrants, and we're just, that's going to be our zero. And now we'll try for about, we should be able to do about 30, I would think. We'll start, start there, we'll see how it goes. That's 30 off the diameter. You saw how I was using a vacuum in there to try to control these uh, the chips, you know. The cast iron's a mess. See how we came out. Ooh, one over. Oh, I want three. 125 and I ended up a little bit over at one and a half over 126 and six. Let's get that thing out of there. That looks beautiful. 100%, 100% clean up. Came out. This is awesome. Awesome. That's what we want. We like awesome. A uh, little
bad spot in the casting right there though oops right there some holidays in the casting there and a little one right there but that's okay a little deburr and we're ready to make the bearings get the bearing shells made okay here we go all uh machined up both of them are done this one uh didn't really have any holidays maybe a little nah hardly anything right there but as far as inclusions go but you know they're castings this one had a big one there and a little one over here a couple there so a few, few little things but they came out really nice just awesome uh, they're both both within a thousand so uh, one's a half a thousand this one's a half a thousand under and this one's uh, one and a half thousands over, but uh, that'll be fine. That's just fine. Uh, that's, that's nothing uh, <laughs> for the size. This is over three inches, so th three and eight inches. So, and uh, these are my sacrifice. The shims I were using was just aluminum fifty thousands aluminum, and those were just sacrificial shims. They, those aren't the ones I'll probably be using. I'll probably make up uh, whatever custom shim I need to make for this, and. Uh, but these are just sacrificial ones for the machining process. So I think we're good to go. And uh, we'll make the, get the bearings shells made next. And uh, I think we're, we're getting so close. Uh, these will need a little paint. They just, I just, pri when I cleaned them up, I just primed them uh, so they wouldn't rust. And, uh, but we'll uh, get those painted uh, soon. I might have to brush paint them. Anyway, a little paint, and we'll be on our way. Uh, and we can put a, together a lot of this mixer now. Once, once, the, once these are done, we can put a lot, a lot of the mixer together. Thanks, you guys, for watching. Please subscribe. Please click the no notification bell. Uh, check out Patreon and uh, support the channel. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one.